Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hobbit. I'm an iPhone app developer from Sydney, Australia. I've worked at places like 9MSN, uh, Google and Fox Sports and a bunch of other places you probably haven't heard of. And uh, in this screencast I just want to show you how to make a really simple iPhone app, in this case a to-do list. Um, the difference with this screencast is that I'm not going to show you any beginnery stuff. I'm going to show you the proper stuff that people actually do use to make properly complicated apps but just uh, for a small app in this case, so hopefully it's detailed enough to be useful but simple enough for you to follow. And um, I apologise in advance if this screencast isn't very polished. Uh, a mate put me up to this, thanks Scott, and so I'm just going to try this out and see if anyone's interested and uh, if they are then I might buy a proper version of ScreenFlow which will get rid of the watermark and do this properly, that kind of thing. Anyway, here we go. Um, Here's the to-do list app, here's a finished copy I made earlier. And basically it's just got a table view with a list of tasks and the ability to add tasks. So I want to add another job, uh, make a screencast. And add another one. Um, tease Scott if no one watches this. That's all we're making, pretty simple. And uh, let's get started. All right, here's Xcode. We're going to make a new project. Now, my favorite template is the single view application. I like this because it doesn't give us much craft. Okay, the product is going to be to do list app. Put whatever you want in here. Um, you can kind of leave most of this as is, you can change it all later if it matters. Class prefix, I'll leave that empty. Um, that's only useful for big apps, for big enterprise customers generally. It's going to be an iPhone app. Now, we don't want to use Storyboard, so no, we definitely want Arc. It'd be crazy not to use Arc these days, and uh, we're not going to use the built-in unit testing framework. It's pretty average. If we are going to use unit tests later on, we'd use something like Kiwi. Uh, here we go. Okay. All right, let's look at what that gives you. Um, like I said, this is a really minimal um, app template that Xcode gives you, which is great. It's less stuff for us to throw away. Here's the app delegate. This is kind of the um, starting point for the app. And um, it makes a view controller. View controller in iPhone development is kind of like a screen. It's the best way of thinking of it. And here's the view controller that it makes. There's the code for it. Nothing all that interesting. Let's run this and see what we get. Now I apologise, Xcode might be running a bit more slowly for me than normal because I'm recording a screencast, so if things run slowly just bear with me. Okay, um, let's launch the simulator and it's just a bare app with nothing on it. But it works. Okay, let's get rid of the view controller it gives us to start with. And um, to organize things into folders, a neat trick I've found in the past is make a folder outside of Xcode in the Finder. Drag that in and copy that in. We're not also making a folder for our views. And for our helpers, managers, and uh, that'll do for now. Okay, let's make a view controller for the initial uh, table view that pops up when you start the app with the list of to-do items. To do that, we'll make a view controller. This view controller, we'll just call it the to-do list, and it will be a table view controller with no nib file. Uh, 
And uh, let's change the app delegate so that's the screen that appears when you start the app up. Now, the app delegate is still linked to the old view controller, which we deleted before, so let's change that. In the header file, let's just change this to a generic UI view controller. And in the implementation file, we'll import our new view controller. And let's make one. So to do this thing equals like in it. Okay, so what this line does, it makes a to-do screen. And now we want the app to start up on that screen. Notice we're using Alec in it. None of this in it with nib name because we are uh, not using nibs. Okay, now the app starts up with our new view controller. See, it's just a table. Let's put that table inside a navigation controller so we get that nice blue bar at the top with the title. To do that, in the view controller, let's change the init method so that it sets a title because the navigation controller will pick up that title and use it. Let's change the init with style to just a plain old init and make it called a super UI table view style plane. The reason I'm doing this is I want the view controller to be responsible for its own style. And uh, if it's created correctly, let's set the title. Okay. Now what we need to do is now make a navigation view controller and inside that nav controller we are going to put this to do view controller. So your navigation controller, navigation controller, alloc init. Now this uses a slightly different init method. And we want the app to start on that navigation controller. So we're making a to-do screen. We're making a navigation controller which contains the to-do screen and we're starting the app up on the navigation controller. Let's start this up. Great, so the navigation controller has given us this bar at the top and it's containing the table thing underneath. Great. Now this is where things get interesting. What we want to do now is make a data source and a manager to manage that to fill the to-do list table. So let's start off by making a model. I need to make another table, another group for that. All right, let's make a model class for a single to-do item. It's just an inner subject because it's that's the most basic uh, class you can inherit from. And all our to-do item will have is a title. Now notice, if you're a bit more advanced, I haven't bothered with this stuff. Um, for the purposes of the tutorial, I'm going to leave that out. You can usually leave it out unless you're too worried about the overhead that um, Atomic gives you, which generally isn't enough to worry about. Okay, so we've got our to-do item. Now let's make a manager who's responsible for keeping track of a bunch of to-do items. Let's call this the to-do manager. Now our to-do manager is going to be a singleton, so let's make a singleton method. Plus means it's a static function. An instance type means it returns itself, its own type. Shared manager is the name of this static method. Now don't worry too much if you don't understand this. This is just boilerplate for creating singleton. Great. 
All right. So here's the singleton. All it does is keep track of its single instance, and one time it'll create that instance, and from after that it'll just return it. So let's put it in the header file so that that's accessible to everyone. And the next thing we want our to-do manager to have is a list of to-do items. So we'll make that as a mutable array. Notice we're calling it items here. The instance variable will automatically be underscore items. So in our init method, In our inner method, we're going to set that property to um, be, an em be an empty array. Actually, no, we'll fill it with some sample data to start off with. Um, this here is just Objective C boilerplate for an initializer. All right, so let's make it start off with a couple of fake to do items. Take the dog out. Here's our fake second item. Um, take the garbage out. As you can see, I'm not very creative in my titles. They're both pretty much the same. Okay, so we've now made a couple of fake to-do items. Let's put them into this property here. So. By default, it synthesizes a property with an instance variable. It's the same, just with an underscore at the start. So underscore items, let's create an array with a couple of these couple of fake objects. Okay, so what we've got here is a manager that has the ability to keep track of a list of items through a mutable array property. And it's a singleton, so it's easy to access from other parts of the app. And now what we want now to do, now what we want to do is get our view controller to show the items from the manager on, in its table view. Now because we inherited it, table view controller to start with, our view controller will automatically have a whole bunch of method stubs for that are appropriate for table views. So let's use these. Firstly, we need to inherit our manager so we can use it. And also the item class. Let's get rid of this craft. All right, number of sections. That's not really appropriate for a, um, a table view that doesn't have groups like ours. We're just using a plain one so we can get rid of that. Number of rows in section. Here's where we need to tell the table view how many rows we've got. So let's get that from the to do manager. Okay, this bit of code gets the singleton. Then we can do items to get the list of items from the singleton instance. And dot count gives us the number in that array. Now, this is the method that the table view calls on the view controller to get each individual cell. So basically we need to create cells here and fill the title in appropriately for whatever row number that cell is. But because we're developing for iOS 6 here, and you probably should be developing for iOS 6 unless you've got a really good reason otherwise these days, we're using DQ reusable cell with identifier. Now this, for this to work, the table view has to be configured to know what kind of cell to make for this given identifier, which is here. So in our view did load, that's where we should configure that. So we get the table view that this view controller is managing. We want to register a normal table view cell class for that particular string. So what we've done there is we've meant that when we call this, 
it will recycle a cell that scroll off the top of the screen. If there is no cells to recycle, then it will know that for this identifier, which is passed in here, it will know that, because we've called this before, it will know that that means we want to just create a UI table view cell. And it's really handy if you use subclass UI table view cell to make custom cells, which you will probably want to do a lot of the time. So now our self arrived index path will have a cell. We need to configure that cell. So the first thing we want to do is get the to do item for that particular row. So let's get that from the manager. Get the shared manager, get its array of items at subscript next path dot row. Okay, and now we want to configure this cell to show that item's title. Alright, now if I run this, it should show a table view with a couple of entries. And it's working, that's already. Okay, now let's add a plus button top right here so that you can add new items. Okay, to get started, let's make a new view controller for that. This view controller will be the new to do item view controller. Now, this one won't be a table view controller, it will just be a plain normal one. And we don't want either of these turned on. Now because this view controller is a bit more complex than just a table, it's going to have fields, well in our case just one field, um, we're going to make a custom view to back that view controller. So let's make that. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to configure the view controller to use that view. So in our view controller's load view, that's what we do. Now we want to keep that view around, so let's assign it to an instance variable. Okay, so what this has done in the view controller, when it, the view controller is in, initially made, it doesn't have a view that is managing. That gets lazily created. When it's time to create that view, um, load view gets called. And so what we do here, we just make one of our custom views and assign it to the self.view. And now that is the view that the view controller is managing. And just to prove that that's working, let's make it a red view. And let's change the inner width frame to just a plain old inner because in the load view method of the view controller, we don't know the size yet. Okay. Now let's add the plus button to the first screen. So back to the original view controller, in its init method, let's add the button. We do that by accessing the navigation item property and making a new button. Okay, what we're doing here, we're making a button. It'll go on the top right of the, um, of the navigation bar. It's just going to be a standard add button. And 
this is what it will call. Now we haven't made the tap add method. Now we have. Now in here what we want to do, we want to make the new to do view controller and push it onto the navigation stack. So let's import that. Let's make one. Let's try that out. So what this is going to do, this, this is the button, here's what it calls, it's being assigned to the top right of the navigation bar. When it gets tapped, we make a new view controller, a new page, and here we push it onto the navigation stack so it'll slide in from the right. Let's run that and see how it goes. Great, worked right, first time. Notice there's no title. Let's fix that. In the init for our new view controller, let's get rid of the init with nib name, just make the plain init, because again, we're not using nibs, and set the title. New to do. Let's run that again. Great. Okay, now well, let's make this view what we want. Okay. So the way I like to structure my code is view controllers are responsible for any data access. Views are responsible for creating the views and laying them out. And helpers are responsible for creating and customizing views. So a view should only be one or two lines involved in the creation of each view and helper should do anything more complicated than that. So let's make a helper that will make a text field for us. Let's make this a category on UI view. And let's make this called, this helper will make a field, add it as a subview and return it so that it can be laid out correctly on the screen later. So the first thing we'll do is make the text field. Then we'll configure it. Centered vertically, we want the text field to have a we want a text border style of a normal rounded rect. We want to apply the placeholder text. We want to add it as a subview. And we want to return it. Let's put this in the header file so it's accessible elsewhere. And now let's take advantage of this. We're going to take advantage of it in our view. All right, let's get rid of the red. Let's start off with an off-white color. So color with white. And let's create our text field. Actually, since this text field will need to be accessible by the view controller, let's make it a property. Remember that properties are accessible as instance variables by putting an underscore at the start. Now we need to include our helpers from before. Okay, that's as simple as it gets for making our custom view have a text field, but now we need to lay it out. 
Alright, in our layout sub views, I like to just grab the width and height. I'm not going to bother with the height, we won't need it just here. And what we're going to use that width for is for dynamically placing the title. So I don't need to know that the iPhone is 320 points wide. I don't like to be able to, to have to remember that kind of stuff, even though it's pretty straightforward. Um, this really comes in helpful for dynamic heights because I can never remember how high the area is um, when you take off the top 20 pixels for the status bar and the 44 for the navigation bar and I can't even remember off the top of my head how tall that tab bar is. So what I like to do in my layout some views is use the width and height and lay everything out with that dynamically. And then um, when you go to the iPhone 5, it'll automatically take advantage of that extra space because it'll all be computerized. So in our layout some views, this is where we set the frame of our title. Let's inset it 20 pixels. We'll have to minus 40 for the width for 20 on either side and the height will make it 40 wide, uh, tall rather. Also, let's make the title have the keyboard as soon as you tap on that. All right, let's see how this goes. Great, so we've got a nice gray background. Uh, text field that's nicely centered near the top. Keyboard's ready to go, placeholder is title, and you can type things in. That's great, but it won't save. So next, we need to make it save. To do that, I'm going to add a button in the top right again, and it'll be a save button, and when you save it, the new to-do view controller will pass the information to the manager, and then the manager will um, keep track of that, and when we pop back to the list, this will get it started from the manager again, and we'll get the extra item. So let's make that happen. Okay, in our new to-do item, let's import the manager. Let's make the button. Um, make a standard uh, save or add button. Uh, I think we'll make this a save. Okay, so now we'll have the button and we need to add that tap save method. Yeah, what tap save will do, it will make a new to do item. It will then configure that new item. And then it will add it to the manager. and then it will pop back to the previous screen. Okay, so we'll have a button in the top right. This button will look like a save button. It will call tap save when it gets tapped. Just tap save. Tap save will make a new item, a new to-do item, set the title, add it to the manager, and pop. Now, we need to change the to-do list view controller so that when it gets popped back, it'll do a refresh. So in its view will appear method. In its view will appear, we will get it to reload the data. Okay, so here's our two dummies, hit plus add a new to do, finish, 
this screencast. And it worked. Again, that's a huge relief. This is a live screencast. It's a pressure. That's another one. Um, relax afterwards. And there we go. It's all working. So I hope that's been useful for you and I uh, hope you got something out of that. Oh, and if you've enjoyed this, please go to my website. It's at splinter.com.au. Subscribe to my mailing list. That would be fantastic. That way I can update you when um, I get interest shown and I end up making more of these screencasts. Also, I like to talk about various app-related things, which hopefully you'll find interesting. And um, finally, now that Google Reader is dead, um, you're not going to be able to subscribe via RSS much anymore, so this is great. All right, thanks for your attention, thanks for your time, hope you got something out of that, and I hope you have a fantastic evening or morning, whatever time it is for you right now. All the best.